album concept hour. The album concept hour. It's the album concept hour. Let's roll into this shit. Let's we'll stop talking about that other episode with Veronica and uh, uh, from the band Black Cat, which was really cool. Uh, but that was ages ago at this point. So uh, we're the Album Concept Hour, and uh, today we are actually covering an album very uh, near and dear to my heart, and uh, and and John's is John G's as well. Um, but uh, oh, we should probably get to the introductions <coughs> before getting into it. Uh, my name is uh, Brad LeBaron. I am your host, and I am joined as always by John Aker, right over there. John Aker checking in from COVID hometown. Checking in from the, the <laughs> coronavirus quarantine cast. And then we have a uh, a returning uh, co-host, John Griffith, uh, coming back to the podcast. Live from West Camsville. Johnny G. Live from his room. And uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, we're uh, we're we're breaking down um, me and Johnny G's, uh, one of our favorite uh, albums out there. Neutral Milk Hotels in the Aeroplane Over the Sea. And um, yes. this is an album that I have I have a uh, maybe unhealthy obsession with, um, according to some people. But um, <laughs> it, I is, it is absolutely <laughs> like um, possibly my favorite album. I know that's a strong, strong word, but um you know it's one of those albums that i i force myself not to listen to it as much as i would like to because i don't want to get sick of it you know what i mean um yeah for sure yeah it was um it was the the first time i heard it it was really really interesting to me it's a a concept album through and through um and uh yeah, I'm I'm really stoked that we're finally doing it. It's uh it's one of the first ones that I wanted to do, but I wanted to like hold off and uh, do a few before this, but it's time. It's time to do this one. But what about you it uh It is time. It is time. Um but John G, what have uh what's your kind of uh experience with this album? When did you first like hear it? I I don't even know like exactly where like how I came across it, I just uh, I was like digging deep into indie music and like kind of like yeah. sad shit, and eventually I just came across this and Jeff Magnum and his crazy voice and <coughs> so fucking I was balls deep in it. Did you hear it through like a like streaming service or like the internet or something? Or, like related probably artists? YouTube. I okay. I used to listen to like full albums on YouTube and they yeah. would just like. Yeah, they would play one after another. Okay. So, yeah, that's interesting because like so the, I most likely came across it on YouTube. Wow, that's a good, that's a great, that's a that's one of the cool things about like the new technology is that you can discover brand new bands on your own that are you know up your alley um, without necessarily having a friend recommend mm-hmm. it. Um, for me, I listen well, to this. Well, it's the easiest now. Yeah, like well, I I heard the, it. The on, randomizer is the best. It is nice. It is a really nice feature of of life in general, you know. Um, but I, I, when I heard it, it was on a MP3 player that you know uh, someone like put on the car stereo, and like, I just remember thinking like, why have I not heard this sooner? You know, like I was like, this is so yeah. good. Like I am almost upset that like no one told me about it. You know. Yeah, um, I totally feel that. Yeah, and and it was just like, wow, this is like really something else, you know, because it has, uh, you know, there's some parts that seem like fully, like orchestral. Um, the lyrics are really out there and all over the place. Like, it's a very, uh, it's a, it's a really unique uh, album. There's not a whole lot that sound like it, but I mean, you were saying like, you know, it sounds like the Mountain Goats, um, for sure. But it the the lyrical the, the way he sings lyrically does yeah, it's almost like anti folk of sorts. But like but it but out. it melds well with the folk, you know, and that's why it's like yeah it's yeah so it's, weird. it's using elements but it of works. it. Yeah, you know, is anti folk a, a genre? I think it's just I, I 
I don't know. I I know people have heard use that term before. Oh, I think it's just yeah. kind of like anti-norm, like yeah, anti like uh, typical folky. folk. It's folky, but it's not typical folk, you know. Yeah, it's not like traditional folk. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. But it has all those elements that like. Yeah. Some of like the instruments and like some of the um, you know uh, kind of transitions and stuff. Like this has a lot of this has like a theremin at times. It's got um, you know a lot of brass. Sleigh bells are in there. There's some sleigh bells. There's um, there's there's a lot of um, distorted acoustic guitar, which is cool. Um, I've always want, I've always like kind of chased that sound myself just because I love that kind of like fullness of the distorted like acoustic guitar. Um, but yeah, this is this this album is actually part of how I learned to play the acoustic guitar. Like I would, I, I know most of the songs on this album, and like you know, it they're they're mostly pretty simple major chords throughout the album, but. It you know mm -hmm. it teaches you like song structure and like you know um, it's very accessible for someone that is like on a basic level of uh, guitar knowledge and is wanting to like learn how to play acoustic. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it sounds it sounds a lot more complex than it some of it is. You know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I fucking I'm I I love this album. I'm gonna have a lot of geek out moments um this episode. <laughs> but um yeah, you guys wanna you guys wanna roll into the first track and uh you know see So uh it starts with the King of Carrot Flowers part one. So here we go. King of Carrot Flowers part one. All right. And Dad would throw the garbage all across the floor as we would lay and learn what each mm. other's bodies were for. Yeah, that's a that's a line that always stuck out to me when I first heard this album. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, it's a great way to. Um, it's a really like. Um, what's the word it's a really pure way to talk about um sex <laughs> you know what i mean yeah no <laughs> it's a very throughout this spiritual whole album, way latency is so sick like he's just like not holding anything back and just being super abrupt about like the topics I yeah it. yeah it's very it's very intimate you know it, it yeah. feels it feels very intimate and sex is a is a common like theme throughout the album. Like besides like the, um, so in, in a nutshell, it's kind of like a World War Two theme. Um, it's a it's a little bit of like a love story towards like Anne Frank. Like, you know, if she like lived like he, um, the lead singer uh, Jeff Mangum, um, you know, created the scenario where he was like in love with the you know uh, what Anne Frank could have been. Um, but, uh, now he's kind of throughout the album talking to her ghost. Um, it's a very surreal album. Yeah. In general. It's, it's really, um, like I, 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 I didn't really understand what it was about for a long, a, like many listens for this album. You know what I mean? It's very, uh, cryptic the way that he puts together, uh, lyrics. It's very, uh. I don't know if it's just because the lyrics are just so personal that it's hard to um, figure out what he's talking about, kind of like Paul McCartney, you know, where like the lyrics yeah. are like really like every now and again it's like, what the fuck does that mean, Paul? <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a it's a really it it starts it, like that uh, the transition that I picked there though is like you know kind of a taste of like what is good to come with the album though you know it like starts off with like just you know simple vocals and acoustic and then like all of a sudden it gets into this whole like backing band like behind everything like just to you know let you know like you know you're in for a a weird experience here. Um, before we, uh, we, when we were doing the listen through, I was mentioning, I was talking about how this is kind of like, uh, 
like this and Neutral Milk Hotel are kind of like proto indie ish like things because like it's before they were using the term indie a lot to describe music but like they were playing in the style that indie music is like known for you know Mm -hmm. yeah but it's like lo-fi lo-fi indie you know what i mean it's yeah i know for sure yeah yeah um and, That's what uh, makes it so cool is like uh, so the rawness of it, you know. The production is just just right. This is my style too. Yeah, it's it's like it's raw, but it's also like quality, you know. Like it's it's purposefully, sure. uh, you know, lo-fi, which you know some people are going for when they're making music, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I like I like how these like lyrics are like so real. Yeah. You know, like, and your mom would drink until she has, until she was no longer speaking, and your dad would dream of all the different things to die. Like that's. Yeah, it's very. That's, um, a, that's a part hidden stuff. Yeah, like that's the, that's the thing. Like it's um, it's, you know, kind of it's very symbolic at times, but also at other times it's very like, you know, very real. It's it's yeah, like you were saying, it's definitely very real. It's. The end of the verse is the best. That uh, each each dream he has about dying is a little bit more uh, than he would dare to try. I, uh-huh. I always just love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I always and I always <laughs> thought that it kind of that's represents. That's pretty depressionism. Yeah, well, it it depends. It, it it's like kind of the working class life, you know. Um, you know, being in like a poor working class family, you know, you don't. Your parents are like working so much that like. They don't like even see each other anymore, and like I don't know, it's just it's just a really bad you know way to be living, you know. Um, but and it, but that's the thing, like a lot of people are living that life, so it is oh, very yeah. hard that's, hitting and real, you know. Super relatable, honestly. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah, like this oh, that's like, like that. That's the worst part about child rearing these days. That's what everybody's doing yeah. for the most part. Yeah. What the mass of people are doing, they're yeah. working so hard to mm-hmm. feed their kids that they're not actually being with their kids. Yeah, it's it's real uh, idiom. Difficult... It's a real idiom of society right now. Yeah, well, it's a difficult balance to um, to do forty hours a week and have time to you know both Sometimes recuperate plus. from work and then like you know be like present for your kids you know what i mean like because you have to recuperate mm-hmm. in order to do that you know so yeah no i mean it's uh it's a pretty uh the dire, road, is, the road is really uh i well the road is really like splashing a thing on that i yeah. see it with my sister every day yeah i think it's, it's not it's that she don't harder, love her kids or anything you know, like that you know. They're just, they're not used to being around their kids this much. Yeah, and, and I think that, I think, <laughs> yeah, well, I think a lot of people no, are, sure. what's up, John? Oh, I was just going to say that's very eye-opening, you know, to our relationships. Is, you know, you don't really spend that much time with, you know, people, and when you finally do, you learn things mm-hmm. you want Anyways. Yeah, well, because as an adult, you know, you spend so much of your time uh, just at your job. You know, that, you know, your time at home is mostly spent kind of decompressing from that. And then, but yeah, when you give all day, every day, it's like, all right, well, I guess we really got to get comfortable with each other, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. when you do get home, you're, yeah, you're so stressed out that you just pretty much, you know, pass out. <laughs> yeah. You just yeah. need some time to your damn self. Yeah. Everyone needs that, I think. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is definitely, and this is back in 99. Um, so I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's been like that for a long time. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah. And, uh, there's two more parts to this track. Um, oh, one thing to mention before we get on to the next track though, um, Apparently, a couple of these tracks are connected to earlier Neutral Milk Hotel songs, which I didn't realize before. Because um, I was like... Not that. Yeah, so the first track is actually connected to the song My Dream Girl Don't Exist, 
Like, I think My Dream Girl Don't Exist is, like, kind of the inception of this album. Like, the Dream Girl is, like, essentially, you know, Anne Frank. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's a, you know, it's a different song, and it's not in this album. But, um, yeah, there's a new term that Genius.com taught me, which is interpolates. And uh, a lot of these songs... Mm -hmm interpolate older neutral milk hotel songs which means they uh kind of repurpose parts of those songs and um you know create new ones like um actually this is a uh, we should probably go on the next track the next track is one that interpolates uh quite a bit this is the king of carrot flowers yes interpolates look it up people uh the king of carrot flowers parts two and three I always love that drum, that, that that transition. It's just so fucking funky yeah. and different. Well, it's just like the dude and da 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 It's just a, it's a really powerful. Um, that's the, like the transitions in this album are just fucking amazing. Like they're just so phenomenal. Yeah, I don't know. No matter what instrument it is, all the transitions are just so sick. You know? Yeah, so it, it's transitioning to a guitar, or, you know, a different sound. Any instrument, so cool. Between tracks, there's great transitions. Like within mm-hmm. tracks, there's you know great transitions between parts. Um, it kind of feels like a rock opera in a way. Um, sometimes, especially this song. This song has like, I think three separate melodies. Um, you know, so like almost three different songs in this one. Um, Did you know that uh, th- this album was produced in a Pet Sound studio? Yes, no. I was I was reading that. Yeah, I don't know I don't know if that has affiliation with That's... dude, but it does, is that it is that literally really is that matter. the Beach Boys guy? Like I don't know. I yes, guess that I, is that is Brian Wilson. Wow, Brian Wilson. Yeah, man. That is cool. You know, and that that's cool. interesting because Brian Wilson and Jeff Magnum are both really out there. I think. Jeff Magnum has had some. I think that's battles. what I like about it being so shot at um, studio. Yeah, Brian Wilson. Yeah. Like, I think they both suffer from some mental illnesses. Probably, probably Brian Wilson much more severe than Jeff Magnum, but um. Well, yeah, Jeff Magnum I never got the level correlation. of success, so he never got that like crazy attention on him as much. Mm-hmm. Which is like definitely part of you know Brian Wilson's problem is that like, you know, definitely. on top of the mental health, he has to deal with it being one of the most popular groups ever <laughs> yeah you know in the spotlight yeah 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 whereas neutral milk like everyone knows neutral milk but it's still you know it's not on the same page as uh no. as you know beach boys or you well, know, a lot of rock groups the hip if you want to call them hipsters like you and i i guess yeah i was about to say they're the uh, fans usually... of hipsters but yeah i mean they're huge, and you know, people who know them. Like I remember when they came to Madison, like their their yeah. Yeah. Uh, show sold out in like under a day. Like, yeah, I tried to buy tickets; it was sold out like the day they announced it. Yeah, you know? and so they, they have a huge following. They do, and I, I, you know, I was such a fan of them before I moved to Madison. But then when I moved to Madison, people kind of like scoffed at me or whatever when I like told them like, "Oh, that's one of my favorite albums ever." Like, oh, yeah, you know, fighting. typical favorite album. And it's like, but it's such a good yeah. fucking album. What do you want? You know? Yeah, yeah. People hate on any hipsters. Or yeah. whatever. I hate that term, but... P- P- well, I think, I think that some... People some... hipsters really classed here in Madison. Well, I think some people just like to hate on people for enjoying things in general, you know? Yeah, it, it, sure. yeah, it's like you know, just trolling for the sake of of pissing someone off. You know what I mean? It's just like, well, mm-hmm. just just let me enjoy this. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's like yeah, I, yeah. you know, though one, one of the cooler things. One one of the cooler things about like the way media has expanded is that you can have so many different kind of genres, and they can all survive in this market. 
because everything's divided. You know, yeah, like, like yeah. It, it only takes a small, it's like with cable, it only takes a small share to like it to be enough to be a success to keep. Well, yeah, especially with with music, somehow. especially because yeah. like music is so it's such a personal thing. Like what you like in music, mm -hmm. you know. So um, mm -hmm. when you find something that you connect to, it is a very uh, intimate kind of thing, you know. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get into the the themes of the the track a little bit. Um, uh, because I'm I'm you know I'm looking at the time. You know me. Um, but, uh, this song is just for the record for interpolation. It's connected to synthetic flying machine, which is from a different, uh, album actually. There's so like part, uh, I think part three essentially is a, on a different release is like an entire track on its own. Um, but same lyrics. So, um, it's kind of a slow hmm. down raw kind of low key version of it. Um, this is like a demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like a demo, but a lot more. Um, I don't know, it's, it's very different. It's very different, but, um, hmm. but yeah, it start. This song is the one that starts with "I love you, Jesus Christ." So you remember, you remember this one, John A. The one that starts with "I love you, Jesus." Yeah, I remember like very early on in the album thinking like, "Wait, what? Where is this album going?" because <laughs> i was like yeah. i didn't cause i like, used to just belt this yeah oh, oh oh yeah dude like i was it's so it's so like big you know it's such a big intro i know and the the notes he does in the vocal with his vocals are so cool too that they add to the uh, not absurdity of saying yeah. what he's yeah. saying but just uh, yeah, I don't know. This right. works so well. So, you know, yeah. he like goes all over the place mm -hmm. with just that. Yeah, there's one so line. it's not just like a basic melody. It's yeah. just the notes go all over the place, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and he does it over and over and over the same way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I think that uh, I'm not quite sure like what he necessarily meant, but um, in the context of like. World War Two. I thought that maybe they were kind of bringing that up just to put a juxtaposition to what was actually happening. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, there there was, you know, there was some people that were, you know, religious in Germany that were just ignoring this stuff happening. You know what I mean? And I think oh, yeah. that maybe he's talking about some of the people that would like. You know, there are people all over be, the world be, that were ignoring. This well, guy. yeah, and there was like people that would like you know be you know Christians on Sunday, but then when it came to like you know Germany and what they were doing, they were like turning a blind eye or something. So I don't know if that's what he was getting at, um, but that's what I always thought when I first um, heard the song. I guess I have like a whole different story in my head of what this album's about than like what it might actually be about. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I did too. When like uh, you're the one who told me it was about World War II, like probably a year ago, and I was just like, yeah. "Oh, weird." I never thought about it that way because I always personalized it in my own like head, you know. It's, Which is it's probably a, you know obviously what art that's does. What they want that's, really, you to do. that's really interesting because like there's not a lot of albums where that's the case, you know. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's what I mean about them having like this kind of like Paul McCartney or like Beatles esque uh, songwriting because like. It's just a lot of vague stuff uh, that can be interpreted in a lot of ways, um, but they just, you know, they wrote it on the page and it worked and they kept going, you know. And I think that's all the best music, though. You know, is it just kind of flows yeah. out. And, Stream yeah. of consciousness, There's, you know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's uh, there's not a whole lot to uh, to talk about as far as the themes uh, for this song, um, but uh, what's he does he does say I will float until I learn how to swim inside my mother in a garbage bin, which is a very weird <laughs> line. It's one of the first like strange lines that you hear. Um, there's a lot of stuff about not only just sex but like birth and. Um, yeah, a lot of Mother like fetuses and imagery. semen and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like not just like sex, like the sexy part of sex, but like all the other aspects of sex too. 
Yeah, all our, the actual our, biological our yeah. fucking... Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I feel like we should get to In an Airplane Over the Sea. Uh, it's track three, and it's the one that most people know. Here we go. And when we meet on a cloud, I'll be laughing out loud. I'll be laughing with everyone I see. Can't believe how strange it is to be anything at all. I see why that was chosen to be the single. Yeah, that one is, that one really stands on its own. It's it's in this out like you you can listen to that on its own and it's you know it's it's powerful. It's you know that's definitely Solid the track. Um, yeah most people. It's it's really fun to play too. Like I it's it's the probably the first one I learned how to play and it's very um, I don't know. It's almost like a worship song. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what yeah. It kind of feels like. I always thought it was extremely spiritual, like uh, yeah. just kind of life affirming, kind of like someone just discovering like secrets of life. I, I, it's just I don't know. It's very raw and yeah, ethereal. Yeah, and it's it. it's kind of um, it, it it's kind of setting up some of his like I think uh, uh, questions for the album too. Um. Mm. Like the first two tracks don't do a whole lot to set up the theme, but this one really like it, it, it's the first time he mentions Anna's ghost. Um, you know, hear voices rolling and ringing through me, um, and then um, oh yeah, the the the, la the last uh, line uh, or the last uh, verse or whatever. Um, you know, when we meet on a cloud, I'll be laughing at lo out loud. I'll be laughing with everyone that I see and then can't believe how strange yeah. it is to be anything at all, you know? And it's just, he's like in a very, that's very, that's very spiritual. He's in a very contemplative place, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> it's it, the whole album's pretty spiritual. I mean, honestly, if you like look at some of the, you know, specific things that he's talking about, he's talking about like existence and like God and like, you know, uh, whether or not those things are, you know, important to him. And it's, it's a really, it's a lot of stuff going on here, you know, on top of just the, you know, World War II and Holocaust and, and Frank stuff, you know. There's also oh, yeah, for sure. Kind yeah. Of like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, this one is also one that interpolates My Dream Girl Don't Exist. I think there's a few lines from this, from that um, song. Um, and uh, well, they say in the lyrics right here, and this ghost all around your voice, it's rolling and ringing through me. Yeah, yeah. oh, is that oh, That's... yeah, does the, do they mention that in the uh other song? Um, my dream girl don't exist. <clears throat> oh, man, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, but I was um... just saying that, that that was a relatable line. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. I love, yeah, I like his lines. A lot of good lines. Um, shit, I, I feel like I was going to say something about uh, about this, but... Oh, yeah, I, I don't know. There's a lot of cool theremin action. This is when the theremin comes in uh, and really kind of shines, um, which is a very underutilized instrument. And I remember when I first heard this album, I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know, because I hadn't heard it much at mm -hmm. that point um, in my music, but it's like an organ of sorts, right? Um, theremin, I think, some kind of like portable. It's like a portable version of that. I guess I still yeah. don't know what a theremin does, so I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I haven't learned a whole lot. Um. Oh, oh, I remember what I was oh, going to say. I'm dead wrong. Next song is Two-Headed Boy, right? So uh, one of the things I read in the Genius uh, notes um, was that Two-Headed Boy was kind of a way to describe himself and the kind of, um, mm. you know, uh, struggle between lust and actual love, you know, for Anne Frank. Um, 
Hmm. And so, and I, I always saw the two headed boy thing as, you know what, let's, let's play the clip first and then we can talk a little more about this before I get too much into it. But this is two headed boy. That line always just fucking gets me, you know, like yeah. uh, through the notches of her spine. Like, it's just so fucking raw. It's like, I yeah. don't know, his word choice is just so fucking so, unusual. You know? So, okay, that brings me to what I was kind of talking about before the track. So, I, I've always thought that this song was about... Nazis doing experiments on twins, and that's mm-hmm. always that's that. always how I've like I've viewed this song. That's always how I've viewed the context of it in the album. Um, mm-hmm. But apparently, that's not what it's about. But if you look at it from that context, it's like it. I don't know. It, it, it you, you can kind of see that kind of thing happening. And he might have a dual message that he hasn't actually shared with the public on this. You know what I mean? He's very mysterious and mm-hmm. he doesn't give a whole lot of detail to people that ask him the, about the meaning of his songs. Um mm-hmm. and, nor is he interested in doing so. Um <laughs> but yeah, I, I I always thought that it was kind of um, you know, uh, one twin is being experimented on and like essentially tortured, and the other twin is like feeling it through their like you know twin connection or whatever. Um, but mm-hmm. um, I guess that it's more the two-headed boy is kind of about you know him, uh, you know, like I said earlier, and kind of his. Lust and love stuff. But, kind of a bipolar thing of sorts. Not bipolar, but yeah. Multi personality, kind of different ideas, you know, ch- paradigm changing shifts. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, yeah, like there's a lot of really very strange word choices. Like you said, like they'll be placing the, um, you know, in the dark, we will take off our clothes, and they'll be placing fingers through the notches in your spine. Spine, um, like yeah, it's fucking yeah, like that. That's one line that I really, I always thought was part of you know about the twins. You know, like someone yeah, yeah, literally well, putting you, something it, into their spine. You know, well, and the experiment experiment aspect of that as well is very yeah. obvious. Yeah. But yeah, and it it ends with this really cool. It like um most of the song has a really driving kind of. Guitar. I really I really like verse four. Yeah, verse four it, 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 it. I was about to say it, it has a driving guitar like that, like has kind of a percussive kind of quality to it, and then it has mm-hmm. it slows right down into this soft somber uh, final verse, and uh, you know, um, let's see, the world that you need is wrapped in gold silver sleeves left beneath the christmas trees in the snow um oh and here's a here's a controversial line here and i will take you and leave you alone watching spirals of white softly flow over your eyelids and all you did will wait until the point when you let go so i think that might be semen he's talking about Mm -hmm. like spiral of white softly (laughs) flow over your eyelids like, I, mean, not, I don't mean to get crashed, but like a cum braids. shot. <laughs> um, this way to communist daughter, it's like the best. Oh, I know. But like once I, I, I thought about that, I'm like, is that actually, is that what it's about? Maybe that's the lust part of it. It seems more about, like a romantic you know? line to me, personally. Well, and well, I mean, uh, so I originally thought of it as like you know uh, a, a literally snow coming down from the sky on to uh-huh. everyone or i guess in my context i was thinking ashes from like burning um you know chambers from world war Two. i thought this was a lot more about world war Two and holocaust than it actually was um but 
Well, I mean, there it, it might be about that too. But anyway, you can take it multiple ways. There's the there's the there's the PG version, and then there's the uh, R version. Um, but yeah, I I, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of uh, oh, and this is uh, the beginning of his uh, his favorite lyric uh, is the d d d d d d d d d d d d. Um, yeah, he likes to use these D's a lot when he's, uh, making his own little melodies. Um, but yeah, this next song though is a, uh, instrumental track and it's called The Fool. So yeah, that's a completely instrumental track. Um, kind of shows, and it, it kind of like comes out of nowhere a little bit um, compared to the previous songs. Um, I know the first time I listened to the album, I was like, "What is going on right now?" Because it's like it goes from like you know fairly regular you know songwriting and music to this whole orchestral like in between part, like yeah. It's it's a very um you know it's a very full uh instrumental track. It's actually a pretty good example of what I was talking about last week the last time. What do you mean? Oh like that's kind of a lost art to have like a fully instrumental track. Oh yeah, it's we were like we were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, like I, it's always um you know I, I, it's always a cool thing when they do that just for one track, you know, because it, it shows it shows what they're capable of when they don't have words, you know. Um, but yeah, this one is uh, possible. I think it's mostly is like uh, supposed to be a kind of like military march kind of uh, thing going on um, to kind of emphasize the World War Two theme. And uh, also, the fool is uh, a card in the tarot deck. So, I mean, if you know about tarot, you can look into that stuff. Uh, I don't know exactly all that the fool represents. I just know that I'm pretty sure that the fool is also represents Jesus, the sacrifice. I don't know. Um, mm. But I've uh, that before. oh, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, it's it's. I don't know why it's it's that way, but yeah. Anyway, um, there's not any lyrics though for this one, so we're gonna move on to Holland 1945, which is a bang. I love this song. The hit song. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh man, that one's uh that that was uh, I think one of the first um ones that they released uh Holland 1945 um because there was like a big poster and uh, single like picture for this one, but um mm. yeah it's a really just high energy fucking tune like all the way through, um and uh, this one really I think. Part of what's cool about this album is it kind of feels like a, it feels almost live, you know, start to finish, mm-hmm. you know, um, mm-hmm. just the I, way he counts it in. And that's cool. Yeah. 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 He's like a band leader, you know, um, he's mm-hmm. like embracing sure. that kind of like role, you know, and sometimes it does kind of sound like almost yeah, just like really... a circus. What? What John? I was going to say, it, it really does feel like one of those albums that's like, they wanted you to know what they sound like live. Like sometimes that's a thing with recording now, is that yeah. bands that sound better live sometimes lose that in the in, in a perfect recording process. So oh, like sometimes yeah. you want you want the people to feel what you sound better like live, but that's really what you that's what you're doing. That's that's what's getting you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's there's um. 
sir, like uh, 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 King Gizzard just came out with a live album, and I love their regular recording stuff, but this live album is definitely a step above their like regular studio recordings. It's very good. Um, also, Queen. That's awesome. Queen's amazing too, but I have a live record of Queen. Queen that's just fucking phenomenal. You know what I mean? So there, there are definitely bands you know, that like take pride in their live show. You know, and that's that. That was actually a problem that the uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers had for like years. Were they not good live? Was their start? albums? Well, well, their albums were like subpar, but they did these amazing live shows. You know. And yeah, the problem kind of... is, it was so hard for them to capture that live energy. Yeah, they were kind and, of... That's, and that that's was why uh... it was hard for them to, to sell albums for a while. I think that's part of the uh, crux of like punk rock and like uh, like like doom metal and that kind of the you know uh, underground stuff is that you really need to see it live to appreciate it fully. You know. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but. It's always about the atmosphere and like punk and stuff like that too, you know. Yeah, it's like the definitely the mentality, not exactly all the audio. Yeah, and, and like and everyone's and musical. Well, and dude. you know, you're in a house party or some shit, and like everyone's like getting mm-hmm. tr- drunk together and well, like smoking cigarettes and outside and, and, and shit. dancing. Yeah. And... yeah. Um, but now, now this lyric, this song has a lot of uh, a lot of lyrics to uh, parse through, but. Um, uh, let's see. I think this is, yeah, he, he talks about like the only girl he ever loved, uh, you know, was born with roses in her eyes, which, you know, I think is a reference to her being already dead. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, he, he, he goes from saying that to now she's a little boy in Spain playing pianos filled with flames. So I think what he's kind of going for a little bit is like, uh, Maybe uh, I don't know relating this to reincarnation. Well, I don't know. What do you no. What do you think? <laughs> well, she went from a girl, and then to a little boy. Okay. I don't know. Huh. Maybe not. But... No, no, no. That's that. No, I mean that's uh, that, like like I said. I mean I have my own weird interpretations of this album, and then I don't know how right they are. Um. But I was thinking, like, it was, like, kind of also trying to um, show how this affects children throughout the the country, you know, it's affecting everyone. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I feel Um, that. And then, uh... oh, yeah, and this part, uh, and now he rides the comet's flame and won't be coming back again. The earth looks better from a star that's right above from where you are. And so he's kind of, I think he's kind of saying like, oh, you know, and even, you know, that boy died, but now he's in a better place because he's not suffering anymore. Um, which is kind of, a, which is kind of one of the, the kind of other themes in this album, I think, is the, you know, the fact that, you know, once they're gone, they're not suffering, which is better than existing in like concentration camps or whatever is going on in these characters lives man that was a rough war i've <laughs> seen the world war two i've seen two world war two museums yeah yeah it's a, that was it's, a rough war. it's uh All right. it's pretty it was... messed up yeah well world war one was maybe just about as messed up but Di- mm-hmm. Different messed up. Was, oh, uh, they were they were um, both horrible. Yeah, they were. They it was were more both... of a gentleman's war, though. Yeah, yeah. The whole because the whole yeah, Holocaust thing was one. like just there was no like defending that, you know. There was no was like, oh, we're doing up, this for right? our country, there, you know. There was more respect during World War One, at least. Yeah, you know, there was, there was a there was a the modulum of stuff were fucked up, but like yeah, there was still a code. That they followed in World War Two. Well, that was that was what was so sick about World War Two, was that it was like twenty years after World War One, and it was worse. Yeah. Was Have you heard so that Norm Macdonald? Worse. The what? That Norm Macdonald joke. You know that Norm Macdonald joke where yeah. it's like, uh, it, he did it on Letterman. It's like, uh, he's like, I don't know if you guys are history buffs, but uh, Germany is this country I'm most scared of. And he's like, in uh, 1920 they tried to control the world. 
And then uh, we were like, okay, it can still be a country. And then what do they do again? Try to control the world again <laughs> or <laughs> take over the world again. So he's yeah. like, why are they even a country? You, you should watch it, though. It's, it's very Yeah, really yeah. Fun. Well, they, uh, defi- I'm, yeah, I'm they definitely had to earn back that, uh, like, kind of the right. And they did it. No, the yeah. second time is the worst because, like, they did it from nothing. Yeah. They I were was... decimated from World War One, and somehow they came back. They came right back. Well, the World they're War... like, we're going to try this again. Not to get too much in the weeds here, but World War One kind of, like, slapped a Band-Aid on the problem without, like, completely t- fixing it, you know? Um, so yeah. it was kind of one of those things where some people, even at the time, were like, yeah, this is going to pop off in, like, 20 years again. Um... But I, guys, I just have. Uh, I was just wondering, um, do you guys mind? Uh... Break time. Can I play with madness? <laughs> oh uh, yeah, can I use the bathroom? Yeah, me too. Yeah. I gotta smoke a cigarette as well. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in. Uh, we'll be back in ten, ten fifteen. All right. All right. All right. Bye. The album comes out now. That was a nice break. <coughs> had a few shots. Yeah, had, had a shot, you know. Uh, and I sipped it. Uh, sipped Took a piss. Of, uh, had a cigarette. Yeah, yeah. It was nice. Yeah, it I was good. Some gelatos. It was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, you know, just uh, before we get into stuff. Uh... <laughs> Now, Dave is unable <laughs> to join us tonight. He gets me every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave is unable to join us tonight. He, uh, we, we tried to do, uh, we're, we, you know, the, the new format is uh, uh, not the greatest sound quality for the listen through coming through. Um, on my end, it's fine. But uh, for the rest of you guys, uh, not the greatest quality. So Dave got uh Dave got kind of a headache and uh, he wasn't feeling it so, um he's not here but he's probably drinking some water I would guess you know what I mean, so um what about you John what are you uh what are you drinking on man? Steel Reserve. Steel Reserve. Yep. Yep. All it's... day every day. Yeah man. Yeah you 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 at least you're consistent <laughs> man. You know you know what you like. It's not every day but. It is. It is. It, it's cheap. <laughs> yeah, cheap is good. Johnny G, what you drinking? What about you, Johnny G? High class PBR. Oh, look at that. Pabst Blue Ribbon. Uh huh. It's classic. Much Blue higher Ribbon class winners. Than, yeah, wor- working class beer. Yeah. Yeah. Good blue color beer. And then, uh, as for me, uh, I got a, I got a couple things, I guess. Um, right now. Uh, we've had it on a previous episode, but Revolution Brewing's Anti-Hero. It's a uh, great. Mm-hmm. It's it's um I really enjoy it, but you can only really have like one cuz like it really dries you out. Like it's a great beer, mm-hmm. but like, you know, as the one thing with these IPAs is like sometimes they're just like they, you know, do too much to you outside of just the, you know, drink. <laughs> and um I also have uh Coors uh Banquet and this is uh, also known as Colorado Kool-Aid, um, if you're wondering, um, because it is brewed with 100% Rocky Mountain water since 19 or 1873. I also have Lagunitas Summer Lager that I'm about to crack open. Jesus. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, let me just fucking crack open right now. Let you guys know what it tastes like. Mm. Yeah, it tastes like a summer lager. So uh, we got that, and then I'm also drinking a little bit of the Kraken, which is a rum, spice rum. The Kraken. The Kraken. So uh, yeah, I guess I'm 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 drinking a lot of things tonight. I guess um, I didn't realize, but I am. Really taking Dave's place tonight. You're yeah, triple you know, fisting. I, I I got to you know uh, we got we got to uh, you know maintain the legacy you know when in Dave's absence, but. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we miss him and we wish him the best. And uh, I, I hope he's on the next one. And we can figure out how to play music without giving someone a headache. 
But uh, that is what we've been drinking today. Cool. <laughs> anyway. Is uh, that yours truly? <laughs> what? Yeah, is that you on the vocals? Is that you on the vocals there? Uh, I think that that's actually I uh, think that was you. a combination of us. Um, that's like me, oh, you, Oh, are we and, all in there? Yeah, that's me, you, and John. Yeah, yeah. That oh, was, wow. That's from the uh, the the King Gizzard episode, the one where I'm like kind of nice. tor torturing you guys with King Gizzard uh, clips. Uh huh. <laughs> you guys are like, what the fuck are we listening to? <laughs> that's that's one of my personal favorite episodes. Um, but uh, getting getting back to the uh, Neutral Milk Hotel, which is what we we're working on today. Um, the next clip is Communist Daughter. And um, it's a banger, but a different kind of banger. You know what I mean? It's not like a like a true <laughs> banger, but a different kind of banger. It's still kind of a banger. So, Kami's daughter coming up. There we go. I love it. There we go. So, um, yeah, that's a that's a very raw um, song. It's it's it, it's really stripped down. It's just the acoustic guitar and uh, Jeff Mangum, and it's uh, it's also a very adult song. Um, it's very. Um, I have no idea what it's about, but it's my favorite song in the album. So. There's this, <laughs> this one is really yeah this one is another one that is very uh, vague, but I did see a note on um, the internet that um, makes a little bit of sense I think, um, and that's the theory that this is also uh, kind of an allegory for the struggle between I guess communism versus fascism in the early 1900s, and hmm. kind of comparing that to kind of the struggle between sexual urges and like you know societal norms for sex you know what i mean um okay trying to trying to navigate uh how to you know do sexy stuff uh while also being in a kind of anti-sex culture you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so I think okay. it's 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 so I, I mean that that kind of makes it make a little more sense to me like kind of uh, combining uh, those two ideas, um, but it, it is also about a a girl um, I guess uh, finding pleasure in herself, uh, finding you know you, you you guys know you know orgasm uh -huh. and shit. <laughs> uh, um, but like you know, this song is literally a you know about her you know a she girl. moves herself about her fist. Yeah, it, it's you know like as you know we said earlier, this song is this album is very sexual, and you know this song's no exception. She's you know pleasuring herself to make herself feel normal and whole, um, which is a completely legitimate thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's when I, when I, I, when I first heard it, I was like, I really don't know what to make of this. Semen stains the mountaintops. Stains the mountaintops. Best um, lyric yeah. ever. It, it, that, that's the lyric that really made me like stop and think like, okay, they're the really. The way he sings it too is just like, yes. Well, it's so, it's so, uh, uh, proud of what he's saying. Like he's not. He's not being what kind facetious. of top? What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say come on the mountaintops? I said what kind of mountaintops? <laughs> well, yeah, I know, right? They could be talking about literal mountains, like between Germany and like France or yeah, something. Yeah, probably. Or they yeah. could be talking about like actual, you know, like like boobs and semen, you know, um, like the previous song. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I think there's a yeah. lot of that kind of double entendre stuff going on uh, for Jeff Magnum. 
Um, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a really it, it's definitely a, a very mature song. Like he's he's definitely talking about sex in a way that he's not like you know giggling about it. He's like you know it's uh but although it makes me giggle a little bit. You know the you know sometimes when I hear it, I'm like oh I can see it's <laughs> um, it's it's just it's a lot not not a lot of songwriters do this visceral of like sexual lyrics um in no. this way you know usually it's in a sexual like a sexy context where it's like they're talking about sex and it's about ultimately you know having sex and being sexy but this is like you know more um more like um uh, what's the the Benji? This is kind of like Benji in the in and yeah. mm-hmm. it's, it's like uh, uh, I like, think this the song is called Dogs. Yeah, he's talking about yep. his like first sexual encounters. Yeah, he's like super Definitely. raw about it. Yeah, it's it's, it's like uh, raw dog. <laughs> raw dog. There's like a really brutal lyric where it's like uh, <laughs> about uh, ejaculating at a woman. Yeah, or a young a girl a girl. I remember at the that. Time. I remember that. Yeah. 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 Definitely a similar uh, songwriting style um, with mm-hmm. uh, Sun Killed Moon. Yeah. yeah. It's very, uh, not abrupt, but it's just like uh, in your face. Well, it's, can- it's candid. It's it's real. You know, it's, um, it's not trying to shy away from bodily functions at all. You know, it's, it's like, you know, this is part of life. This is normal. This happens. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and um, it's an uncomfortable subject because it's like about, you know, younger teens or whatever finding that with each other. So, you know, in, 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 in some way it's kind of questionable because it's like about younger people, but like yeah. younger people have sexual experiences. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, I think it's a valid thing to uh, sing about and to write songs about. Um, but... Uh, yeah, this is, uh, uh, you know, really, really, you know, nice, uh, nice tame tune. But, uh, the next track is mm-hmm. the song O Comely, and this is one of my personal, uh, favorites. It's the longest track on the album. Here we go. There it is. Fifty years later, I wished I could save her in some sort of time machine. Know all your enemies. Yeah, so that that one, um, I chose that clip specifically because it, um, it really gets into the theme of the album um as far as uh as far as like Anne Frank goes you know mm-hmm. um hold on let me uh let me uh, bring up the lyrics here if uh the internet will let me sorry everyone for the technical difficulties uh we are in a pandemic and um <laughs> we're not dealing Truck with you COVID. normal circumstances um <laughs> Um, by the way, oh, I forgot to mention it in, um, the what are we drinking section, but, uh, Ale Asylum apparently came out with a beer called, uh, fuck COVID, but like, you Mm -hmm. know, the fuck and fuck COVID is a V, you know? So like, it's just a one Mm -hmm. V between fuck and COVID, you know? But, you know, as always, like Ale Asylum is like, uh, you know, calling, you know, using what the, you know, day-to-day stuff to promote their shit i love ala yeah i mean it's it's really it's it's, it's really sick. funny that they're doing that um so this one this the the part that we uh i chose for the clip um mentions a really you know dark part of the holocaust um you know the mass graves. So he's saying, I know they buried her body with other others, her sister and mother and 500 families. And will she remember me 50 years later? I wish I could save her in some sort of time machine. Um, which is, um, you know, it, it, like, you know, like you were saying, John, um, 
Griffith, uh, Janji, um, that, you know, you didn't know this was necessarily about, like, World War Two and, like, Anne Frank when mm-hmm. you first heard it, right? Um, mm-hmm. Like, this is one of the lines where it kind of, like, shows, like, late in the album, like, that's kind of, I guess, what it's about, um, just because it says, like, you know, it mentions 50 years later, burying her with her sister and mother, and, like, will she, you know, will she, 50 years later, you know what I mean? So, you know, Mm -hmm. in 99, that would be, uh, you know, 49, technically, Um, but... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so this is like, I mean, there's not too many like direct in, in, you know, implications to World War II and the Holocaust, but you know, this is one of the, you know, the lines in the album that where it was like, it it, it kind of like jumps out at you if you're not like paying attention, like, wait a minute, 50 years later, 50 years later from what, what are you talking about? You know? Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, no, for sure. The line like "Know all your enemies" is actually, uh, well, or we know who our enemies are is used by one of my favorite bands, Me Without You. They have a track called uh, "We Know Who Our Enemies Are" on their first album, mm-hmm. um, yep. which is, I think, part of the part of uh, what really made me respect Neutral Milk because I was a, I was a Me Without You fan first, um, mm-hmm. but. Um, yeah, because they came after, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was. I, I was. I thought it was really cool that they got, they were inspired by uh, Neutral Milk, though. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. But other than the general theme of the album, this song is about um, apparently some uh, adultery happening in their family um, by the dad. Um, uh, I guess the most clear line is like your father made fetuses with flesh licking ladies while you were and your mother were, were asleep in the trailer park, you know? <laughs> um, so it kind of like, sw- like this album, like it, it, it's, although it's about like world war two or whatever, it kind of switches between that time period and like present day, like poor, uh, working class people, you know? Mm-hmm. Like it kind of like seamlessly switches between those uh, experiences, which is kind of jarring sometimes with the lyrics. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, it sucks because that kind of that kind of stuff shouldn't be around at all anymore. And I know kind of treatment still is. But... Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it's something that. Like, you know, the the whole idea of, uh, you know, uh, not, uh, you know, accepting someone just on the basis of, of uh, race or, you know, certain identity things is, like, still around. People are still in that mindset. You know, one of the, uh, one of the little, like, I, I read a short story once that was, like, a, it was a girl from, uh, like, the, the 40s. And she was like coming out of the church with her mom, and it was like a white girl in the south. And she was like, and she heard her mom like complaining about that Hitler, that Hitler over there. I can't believe he's he doing that to the Jews, putting them in those camps. And she was just like, "Look, but, but I mean, you you talk that way about black people, mm-hmm. so you know, <laughs> is one of those things that really like helped." In, in the 60s, it really helped that movement because those kids grew up watching that kind of hypocriticism from their parents. Uh huh. Where, yeah. oh, you can't do that to us, but, but well, why are you doing that to other people then? Like, why right in our yeah, own country? Well, like, yeah, why, like, although. Talk yeah. about that. Although that's like the worst example of it. Like, it doesn't mean that, you know, other people have, you know, like there, the, it didn't exist in a bubble, you know. It, it was something that was inspired by other things in the world, like partially inspired by some of the you know, earlier U.S. stuff happening and what we did. And like, mm-hmm. you know, it was like a, a time where a lot of people were leaning towards that um, kind of fascist uh, way of looking at things, you know. 
So, um, yeah, it's it's a really it was a really dark time, and um, there's uh, I think I think this next track has a line um, that uh, will help with the next thing I'm trying to talk about. But this next track is called Ghost. Here it goes. Nope, I'm doing it on this one. <laughs> hey, John. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I don't even have any more of those hats. <laughs> uh, I got, I got one. I got one over here somewhere. Somewhere, it's, it's, it's in that pile. I don't know. I, I, I got, like I got 10. a pile of hats. Yeah, we are all out I of reds. No We're all out of reds now. We're all together out of reds. The sign's still there, though. The sign yeah. is still there. Cheers to that. Dude, cheers to that. I actually to that. wear cheers this hat. I would never wear a Fabulous hat, but I'll wear this hat. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, because yeah. reds was great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, reds, yeah. reds had its merits. Yeah, it's better than Falbo's. Merging was like the worst thing we ever did. Yeah. Anyway, sorry for the distraction. No, no, no. That was, that was great. Um... But, uh, oh yeah, I chose that uh, clip because it has a line um, that I think is really, really, uh, I never really thought about it a lot until today when I was looking at the lyrics, but um, it says she was born in a bottle rocket, which is essentially saying like, you know, she was, or she was born in a bottle rocket in 1929. Which is kind of saying like she was born into a like volatile uh, world in a volatile situation, um, you know, between World War One and World War Two, you know, um, which is a really interesting like way to phrase that, you know, like like you're in a bottle rocket, you are in a mm -hmm. precarious situation, and it, you know it sucks that you were in that. Um, and she, you know, she. And you know what? You know what's kind of. Go on. What's kind of prolific about that line that you're talking about, is the one that's like, "I know that she will live forever. She won't ever die." And that's kind of like, that's kind of the World War One, World War Two generation, the ones that were like crossed into that. Any, anybody that was like crossed into that, just yeah. lived a whole, a whole different mindset than most Americans live these days. You know. Yeah, and um, yeah, to, to to your point, like there, there, it's like a generation that we still have on a pedestal. They're like the last. It's like the last war that was. Oh, they you know, they were the, the greatest the, the, the generation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and apparently, this song is also about him finally realizing that by telling his. By telling Anne Frank's story through his own means, she will live forever. Um, to kind of like complete hit, you know, the cycle of like, you know, he's in love with this person that is dead, um, but he's being talked to by her ghost. And now in this song, he realizes that like he can kind of amend her, um, you know, experience there and, uh, you know. Tell this, and, and this album is like the last one they had until like 2011, right? Mm -hmm. um, where they came out with like a compilation mm -hmm. of different, um, yeah, a couple already he released did like things. One... Yeah, you, go on, John. Well, he did like a so. I think only thing he did was like a solo live concert album by himself. Yep. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened with him in the band, but like he just yeah, they didn't release that. anything really. Well, I think Besides, it's like demos basically after like in 2011, I think. Well, I think it might be what something like you were talking about earlier, like him being like Brian Wilson in the sense that he gets he gets very obsessed about certain subjects and like um like the the, the fact that he that some songs were interpolated from previous songs, you know? Like he 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 didn't let go of those like subjects that he started writing about in like, you know, in Avery Avery Ivan uh in 
Avery Island times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he, yeah. he like those characters and those ideas like stuck uh, with him um, continuously. And I think that once he made this at, like you know complete work of these characters, it may have been like. I don't know. It may it may have been just like it was complete, and it's like hard to yeah. move forward from that. I've always wondered why they didn't like keep on going because like this album's like a cult classic, you know. Um, oh yeah, That's it putting is, it lightly. Yeah, it's it's really. I mean, even if you're even if you have the perspective that this is just for hipsters, it's we, it's you know well uh, received and well remembered. Um, mm-hmm. So it's. Um, yeah. Oh, one, one more reference they, they make is uh, one day in New York City, baby, a girl fell from the sky from the top of a burning, burning apartment building 14 stories high. Um, now, this is a little conjecture. I don't know if he's actually mentioned talking about this, but he could be talking about the like triangle shirtwaist factory um, in kind of uh, metaphor there because uh, there was that time where... Um, you know, they were forced to uh, work long hours and then you know, they were locked into their working conditions. And then in the um, building they were in started on fire and they were jumping out the window to um, get out. Um, so I don't know if he's referencing that, but it's another, you know, tangential story, you know, in the early 1900s. So I don't know. Any thoughts, guys? I, I was going to say, like, that that line in particular, like, really makes me think of, like, uh, when when the, uh, when the stock market crashed in 29, oh. a lot of people threw themselves, like, there, there, were, there were hotels that had literal rooms where all you had to do was go, like, oh, yeah, I just want to jump from it. And wow. then you pay, and then you go up. And then you would jump from it. That's a, like, yeah. There, there, there were so many people a, that were doing that. That was a thing. Was I didn't wow. think about that, but that's that. Yeah, that that absolutely is like a similar. Yeah, I think that's something that he could have had in mind too. You know, because he he is he mm-hmm. he does have his like head in a space of like early twentieth century. You know what I mean? Like he's really focused mm-hmm. on that in general. So yeah, maybe maybe yeah. Isn't it amazing though? Hotel rooms were literally at the time because that was just okay. They, well, we'll take a profit. I'll take your, we'll take your thirty bucks. Well, sure. it's it's. <laughs> Don't have to worry about cleaning up. I after mean, you much. I I know I know suicide sucks, but it's honestly kind of weird to tell someone that they can't do it. You know, mm-hmm. it's like uh, I think it's well, stupid that it's illegal. Yeah, like, I mean, if you like... if you commit suicide. And you get caught by the police, you can go I mean, to jail for that. I guess it's and good. that's stupid. I guess it's good when it's you so go hard. to, you know, get some sort of like mental help, but like, you shouldn't be just like straight up punished for it. You know, that that seems like no. it's not helpful. That's wrong. That's not. Know. That's not going to help the situation at all. I don't know, all. man. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. To me. But um. <laughs> anyway. Anyways. Um, those are those are mental health. Yes, days. yes, yes. We all need the the mental health in these trying times. Um, this next song is uh, called. Um, so this one's untitled, but uh, apparently originally it was referred to as the Penny Arcade in California. So hmm. you'll probably understand when you hear the sound uh, coming up here. I love how like diametrically opposed the those two sections are. You know? Bagpipes and like the carousel type Yeah. Uh, chaos. Yeah, it goes from like a carousel circus kind of thing to like straight up like just bagpipe bagpipes. solo. <laughs> like I mean yeah. y- y- you don't get bagpipes America! very often, but Scotland <laughs> <laughs> yes, Scotland. Scotland. What is? 
but I can understand why they changed the name uh, from uh, Penny Arcade in California to Untitled. Because, like, a Penny Arcade in California doesn't really fit the theme of the rest of the album. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where, like, they had this, like, piece of music that was really cool that they wanted to put on something, and uh, they did it. This was kind of short anyways, so they're like, yeah, let's throw that Yeah, you know, you know, it, it fits, it fits, you know. Um, but yeah, apparently like the, one of the first uh, posters that came out had it as that title, though. And then it kind of, uh, they kind of, uh, you know, when the album was released, they did a 180 and changed it to Untitled. Um, and then one, one note here, someone was just mentioning that, um, it seems like a kind of hallelujah type of moment, uh, where he realizes that, you know, Anne Frank can speak through him, through his life. And, uh, he's kind of celebrating before the kind of somber ending of the album, which is two headed boy part. Two. It's definitely a good prologue to the ending. I'll agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, this is Two Headed Boy Part 2. And again, I'm going to not play it on the shitty computer. In fact, I should just close this so I don't use it at all. And Two Headed Boy Part 2. What do you think about that one, uh, John A? Oh, you know, I, th I thought it was a pretty good ending to the album. It's very nice, peaceful, very well, folky. Well, I, I I thought that the really like the end where he like talks about God is really interesting. Um, uh, the uh, what is it? <laughs> And when we break, we'll wait for our miracle. God is a place where some holy spectacle lies, you know. Um, he, so he, he's got a very interesting, uh, weird perspective on spirituality here. You know what I mean? Um, saying that God is a place rather than a person, well, you know, an entity. It's, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a very one of the one of the thing. hardest one of the hardest concepts about believing in in gods and especially with with Christianity and believing in one singular God. Yeah. Is that they control every aspect. They they made us, but yet they allow this to happen. You know, like uh -huh. they allow a World War One, a World War Two, a famine, a plague uh -huh. to happen. Yeah. And it's really hard for people to deal with Hearing about the good aspects, uh -huh. and then having to deal with the bad aspects. Well, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think even when I was um, uh, more of a, a follower, um, I didn't really <clears throat> see the negative things that humans did as a detriment to God necessarily, as much. And as that's they... one of the that's one of the problems with religion is that the detriment of humans is not taught in uh -huh. religion. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing, like, you know, it's, well, there's the Eve ate the apple thing, but I think that's always a little blown out of proportion. Um, I don't like to think of everyone I still as, think it was drugs. I don't think, I, I don't like to think of everyone as just sinful from the get-go, because I don't think that that, mm -hmm. like, you know, starts off a person with a good mindset. But... I like, you know, I like that he's questioning his like views on what God is and what uh, God represents in his life. Um, but it's also kind of, um, I saw one line uh, in the genius uh, sidebar that suggested that like, he's kind of like a boy in like this, you know, he's, he's the boy in the jar that's mentioned in the first two-headed boy. Um, and, um, he's being fed these, uh, tomatoes and radio wires, 
uh, which represent, like, you know, information and, like, you know, the ghost talking to him, uh, possibly. Um, but he's also is kind of coming to terms with the fact that she might leave and she might, you know, he might go be alone, but he's saying don't hate her when she gets up to leave. So, like, he's learned that Anne Frank can talk through him and he can, like, represent that and um, she can live forever because of that. But he also has to come to terms with the fact that he can't hate her when she does finally leave. You know, like kind of long winded. Kind of like a reverse but... Casper story right there. Yeah, like he yeah. he. You ever seen he Casper want... the movie? Yeah, I used to watch that a lot when I was uh, when I was younger. That was one of my favorites yeah, when it came out. Yeah. yeah. Was it Christina Ricci, right? Christina Ricci. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that movie, but um. Yeah, it's it's like a reversal on that. Like it's it's you know, well, I guess it's it's, it's similar in a way because I mean, Casper was like a friend, so you know, friendly ghost. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, and Frank seems to be a friendly ghost in this uh, context. So, um, but you know, she's got to move on at some point, and he's got to live his life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a really somber uh, ending though. It's a very, um, I don't know. Like I I I got goosebumps again. I really I, I like I like the ending ending with the foot footsteps and the oh. drop into the guitar. Oh yeah. Because it really feels like the Nazis coming, you know. Uh, oh okay. That really like that that's a very dramatic ending for me. I like that. Mm -hmm. It's it's very. Uh, it's, a, it's 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 a way. To, it, it brings it all back into focus. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, because I mean, you know, one thing that's not talked about much in this album is, of course, you know, what everyone knows about Anne Frank is, you know, the fact that she was like hidden um, and hiding for so long um, before going to concentration camp. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, I think that lends to uh, kind of what you were saying there. Yeah. But yeah, I like I like that it ends in that way too cuz it's so it's so personal in the musical sense and the fact that he's playing acoustic and it really, guitar. It really brings you back around to the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. And this is uh this song is a uh, half a step down uh from the regular tuning. So um you would tune it uh, well, you, if you know half a step down, you know what half a step down is. Um, but mm -hmm. um, that makes it so you either have to tune it down half a step live or switch with another guitar that's already half a step down. But this is the one that I haven't played very off, very much because of that fact, you know. But um, so I have, you can't see this on the podcast, but. I have like all of these songs like written out like nice. word by word and like I even have like my own ratings for myself with like how good I think that I am at the song <laughs> you know <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I found that it was like better to, it, it, like for me, it was like easier to remember the songs if I wrote them down by hand. Um, but yeah, like this is an album that I spent a lot of time with and, um, I, I'd still love to play it live with like a full band, like start to finish. But, um, so far I haven't found people that want to do that yet so um you know maybe one day that will that'll be a thing hit me up hit me up if you want to be part of uh, a neutral milk hotel in an airplane over the sea cover band all right i'm down <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway uh yeah that's that's like that's the album though uh any, any guys got any like closing thoughts on like the themes of the the thing here I thought it was pretty unified. It it, it had its moments. It, it really like it really did a good job of that. 
Yeah. But it, it also did a very good job of like connecting to the current times. Yeah, I just even think it exists. We didn't even realize. Oh, sorry, John. What was that, John? Oh, I just feel like it's just one of so unique and it's its own world. You know, um, I get the messages now more than or the themes more than I did before, but it's still like just so like unique to how it's telling a story. It's uh, Mm-hmm. So it's almost like you really are in Jeff's head, you know. It's like, yeah, it, it's. A, I don't it's think he's really... trying to. I don't think he's trying to exactly have people understand it completely, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, like um, he is kind of notorious for being a little um, dodgy on questions about like directly, you know, direct questions about like what is this about, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I think he, he he's kind of of Paul McCartney's philosophy where it is like, you know, interpret this how you guys want to interpret it, you know? And uh that's that's what it is. You know? So Mhm. I yeah. respect it. I mean, I, I as really, really I, and as, oh. as much as I'd love for Very there so. to be a um like that as much as I'd love for Neutral Milk Hotel to um, make a you know new completely different concept album and one up this. I don't know if they ever could. You know. I don't. Well, it's never going to be like this. I mean, it's just so, like I was saying. It's just so unique to what it is. I mean, yeah. You can't recreate this. Yeah. It, 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 uh, it's a obviously very... you can create a different kind of concept album. But... Yeah. It's not going to be the same thing. Yeah. It, or it's it... going to be a sequel to the same thing. Yeah, I feel like there's not a whole lot of bands that have that like have an album with that quality. Like this, this album almost stands like apart from the band, you know. Like it's exactly. yes, uh-huh. it's, I totally it's, agree. It's it, it, it's uh, it's kind of bigger than the band itself, um, you know, which some people will say is a hipster's thing to say, but I, you know, I think that it is a ba- uh, an album that you know is one of those magnum opus kind of albums you know it's it's uh 100 yeah um i'm biased of course i love this album i i the second that i heard this album i was just entranced and i've always been since that day so um you know this album for me is just a you know magical experience um so um I can only most. I can mostly say good things about this album. I love to be critical, but I guess the the most critical thing I could say is that it kind of slows down at the end, and um, you know sometimes I want to stop at O Comely, but you know mm-hmm. that's probably the worst thing I could say about this uh, personally. It's very spiritual. Well to put. Me. It's very spiritual to me. It it still gives me goosebumps. Um, it just, you know, it hits all of the, um, I don't know, it's, it, it hits a lot of the things that I enjoy in my life. So, like, this is one of those albums that, like, from the get-go, the first time I heard it, I was, like, there. So, anyway, I'm enough. I, I'm, I'm, I'm for, done. Go on, Scott. For me, as a new listener, like I said, I, I just really enjoyed all the all the folk. Yeah. All, all the... Uh, the the way the way he sings again is very is very reminiscent and uh, and, and I, I really enjoy it. I I highly recommend that you listen to it on Spotify on your own headphones because um, there 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 yes. was a lot of uh, stereo stuff that was you know obviously you guys weren't hearing because you're you're hearing mm-hmm. the mono mm-hmm. but yeah I definitely recommend like spending some time like listening to the whole thing again um, you know with better quality for you mm-hmm. yeah it's a good one but anyways um but yeah we're, we're getting to your to the end of this thing um but uh john a are uh, you listening to anything new since the sleep episode oh you know that much just listening to some more 101 yeah. or 105.5 yeah I mean you know n- no pressure we have been doing really a good. lot of episodes lately so you know um, you only really you know ex- be expected to tack on so many things 
Oh, and I, I have been listening to um, the, the Lion and uh, oh, what, what was that album I told you about? Oh, uh, the hip and the what was it? The uh, the, the the folk and the hip hop or something? Yeah, I don't know. I I I I, I have not listened to it yet, but I I will. I will. But that's another bonus episode that will probably oh, be coming out. Judah, Judah and the Lion. Listen okay. to Judah and the Lion. Oh, yeah. They got a very, they got a lot of good stuff. They're very yeah. alternative. Hopefully, uh, they they're really trying to merge a lot of their stuff with their uh, with their folk instruments. It's very good. Yep, I'm a big fan. Hopefully, we will have put out uh, an take episode it all back is a great hit about that. I was about to say so. Hopefully, there will already be an episode out about that because um, this will be coming mm-hmm. out later. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we'll be checking that out for sure. Um, Judah and the Lion. Mm-hmm. And then uh, anything else? No, I'm I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, what about you, John G? What have you that's... been uh, jamming on uh, the past couple of months, dude? Oh, hold on, John G. Can you hear me? Yeah, there he is. What have you been yeah. jamming on, bro? Uh, I actually been listening to a lot of Norma Jean. Nice. Recently, the new nice. stuff and um. There's this podcast that I like. Uh, I just discovered called Come Town. <laughs> I I have heard a few clips from Come Town. That <laughs> they got some. They they're got some fun. Of... They got some funny stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of funny. So uh huh. We listen to some of that. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, I really like. Yeah, um, the same stuff. Uh, what is it? I forget. There, there, there. Just they're, there's a lot of YouTube uh, videos of some Come Town clips. But yeah. Yep, there's some really funny ones. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty silly, but they're funny. Yeah, just like you know, three dudes just making dumbass jokes to each other. You know, typical, exactly. Typical exactly. kind of podcast stuff, but it's you know, it's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I figured you would have uh, liked them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah trying nice. to get through this quarantine. Hell yeah, you know. Um, I personally, I've been listening to. Um, let's see, I just listened to the Killers, or not the Killers. I listened to Queens. Uh, I think it's Killer Queen live, but it's a it's a it's a two album set. That's a live album. It's really really good. Um, I I, I was really surprised when I heard it live because some bands, you know, like we said earlier, are not great live and then other bands are like phenomenal live um but uh other than that um the killers do have a new album out though the killers yeah their newest album is actually pretty good i don't know if i've actually mentioned it on the podcast but it's kind of like a little uh kind of a return to their uh previous uh, like samstown era um recording and songwriting um, it's good. It's great. I, I can't remember the name of it right now, but the killer's newest album is very good. Um, and then, um, oh, also, uh, news to everyone here. Um, we are finally on Apple podcasts. So if you I saw that, if you want to, uh, you know, go on Apple podcasts, uh, rate us and review us, let us know what you think. Um, you can give us anywhere from one to four stars. There's a whole swath of like, how did, how um, did we get on Apple podcast? I don't know. Well, I did email them and I'm like, Hey, why aren't we on Apple podcasts? And they're apparently they're like, Oh, you're on Apple podcast now. So we're on Apple podcast. Right. So, uh, we can be reviewed by the general public. So review us, let us know what you think and, uh, give, uh, give the ghost of Steve Jobs those, uh, sweet, sweet reviews. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's all I got going right now. Otherwise I got the other, I have a new episode of Rolling Stone season two, episode two out on Apple and everywhere else. And that's about the quarantine. So that's what I got going on right now for myself. So Anyway, um, also a uh, new podcast might be coming on the rim, the uh, horizon uh, with the local hip hop artist Rambunctious. So look out for that. Anyway, um, anything else you guys want to get out of the way here before we sign off? 
Just stay safe out there in Corona world, my friends. Wash your hands. Yeah, and just everyone stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. Don't um, touch your face. Don't touch your face. Stay six feet apart. Um, thanks for joining. Johnny us. G, thanks for being on. John G, yeah, dude. hell yeah, dude, it's good to have you. Hell yeah, man. What the hell, G's? Yeah, we'll let you know uh, when the next one is Hi, happening. G. But thank you so much. Thank you everyone for listening, and uh, we will catch you all next time on the Outlook. Thanks for listening. The Album Concept Hour is Brad LeBaron, Dave Gallagher, John Aker, and John Griffith. Special thanks to King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard for the theme music. Please like us on Facebook or friend us on Twitter or MySpace and let us know what concept album you would like to hear on the podcast. See you on Side B. This has been a Revolver Audio production. Executive producer Brad LeBaron. For more podcasts, visit soundcloud.com slash revolver audio. Or to support new content, visit co-fi.com slash revolver audio. Mmm, revolver.